Hi, thank you for watching. My name is Glenn and this is We The Govern. It's been a little while since we've been back in the studio with the COVID-19 out there, and I have to tell you, we have an exciting story today. If you care about vote by mail and the integrity of elections, today we have corruption, we have fraud, and we have undue influence in elections in Washington State. So our story today focuses in Washington state and it starts in Whatcom County, which is the most Northwest County of uh, Washington, right on the border of Canada. Now, Washington state has been an all vote by mail state since 2011. It also mostly went vote by mail in 2005 as a direct result of some election reforms that came out of the governor's race in 2004, which was a total fiasco and an incredibly narrow race between Republican Dino Rossi and Democrat Christine Gregoire. And the original election results showed that Dino Rossi won that race, the first recount he won. And eventually they found ways of excusing multiple recounts until Gregoire won. And then of course they stopped the election. Well, that resulted in a lot of reforms. And ultimately that led to the situation where since 2011, Washington state now for nine years has been 100% mail-in uh, voting, all vote by mail. And we're gonna be talking about a fraud case that looks like involves US Postal Service employees with this mail-in voting. And that's a very critical piece of mail-in voting. Vote by mail requires the US Postal Service to be involved. And this is a very troubling situation. Specifically, we're looking at the 42nd Ledge District, which is, uh, there's two representatives there, and one of the incumbents is Republican Representative Luann Van Worven. And she has a challenger this year as a Democrat, Alicia Rule, who is a Blaine City Councilwoman, and they are vying for the election here in 2020 as to who's gonna be the next representative in that district, state representative. And like all political activity and most people's social life, Facebook plays a big part in these elections. And, the, the challenger, Alicia Rule, decided to post on Facebook just a couple days ago over the weekend that very specifically, she said, ballots arrived today. Mine was carefully tucked together with a flyer by our neighborhood postal worker. I am reminded just how much support we have because even that postal workers union has endorsed our campaign. Now I will point out that the flyer that was wrapped around the ballot, that it was her flyer. It was her campaign flyer. Nobody else's flyer. None of the other mailers that went out in that district, none of the Republican mailers, none of the other candidates had their flyers wrapped around it. It was her flyer. Now that's a problem. And you could say that maybe this candidate was just lying or exaggerating or overly exuberant about how excited she was in running for office for the state legislature. But it turns out based on Facebook again and other people who made their comments that it turns out this seemed to be a widespread phenomena in that district. Mine was like that too. And ours arrived the same way, wrapped in your flyer. So with this helpful evidence, uh, even though candidate uh, Leisha Rule believes that campaigning for office is a heck of a lot easier if she'll just let the postal workers do it for her, she probably was not aware that what she described, what she explained, and what was occurring in Whatcom County is actually a significant illegal activity and that it's illegal to have federal employees assist you on your campaign while they're working. It is an illegal misuse of public resources. It has been illegal for over half a century and it's still legal today. And very specifically, this violates actually a whole bunch of uh, laundry lists of federal laws, including the Voting Rights Act in 1965. And uh, it also violates a bunch of state laws as well. And, uh, but on this case, it's kind of an odd situation where it looks like the uh, state law may be under the federal law. So the federal law violations may be more significant than the state law violations. But nevertheless, this is completely illegal activity and behavior. She bragged about it. She posted it on Facebook. She kept it up there most of the day, even when it was pointed out to her by other people that it was illegal. This is not an isolated case when it comes to bad behavior by US Postal Service employees. And this really matters in elections. Now, there was a case that I wrote an article about in 2019 out of the city of SeaTac, and it had to do with a, just a local PAC mailer, and this was just in uh, 2019, so just, a, just last election. And uh, a little mailer had been sent out to the city to help support the more conservative council members who were in office or who were running for office there. And that was, it was delivered to the Seattle Distribution Center, the US Postal uh, Service, and it just never was sent out until long after the election was done, and then it was mailed out, which means it was useless. It never got to people as election communication days before the election like it should have. 
And it was so well documented. They had done, this group of people had done a really good job documenting it that this is when I became involved. And there was a complaint filed with the U.S. Postal Inspector about exactly what happened here. And the interesting part of that investigation was that they did take it seriously. They went and they looked into it. And it was very clear that that mailer should have arrived well before the election. And they couldn't explain who at the Postal Service in Seattle, who at the post office there in Seattle, decided to stash that flyer in a way that it didn't go out the door. But uh, it should have, and it should have been delivered. And so while nobody got punished, the investigation clearly uh, found that something did go wrong here. Unfortunately, I don't think that's the only thing that is going on out there. And one of the questions that comes up is, if you are a U.S. Postal Service employee, how can you illegally impact an election? Because remember, in vote by mail, we basically outsourced and created this kind of chain of custody requirement where our vote, we fill out our ballot, we put in the mail, is going to be handled by these postal workers. We're trusting them to get it delivered to the auditor's office in a timely manner so that it can be counted. Well, one of the ways that we have found that a postal worker could influence the elections if they were going to be dishonest is they can just make sure that selected ballots don't get there in time, that they pick them up and let them sit for a while and postmark them late and then they just get rejected. It's an easy way to ensure, you know, it's actually a little bit less dangerous than throwing something in a dumpster and getting caught throwing something away. You just make sure they get postmarked a little late, and then those ballots don't count. And if you're going to be an unscrupulous, dishonest person, you could do that and selectively do that from certain voters. And this has happened before. In fact, NPR just a couple weeks ago wrote an article about and did an investigative journalism piece about how there are tons of signed, sealed, and basically undelivered ballots in the vote-by-mail system that never get counted. Oftentimes, the people who think they voted didn't vote, they, they don't realize their vote never was counted. They just basically get thrown away because they're late. And who knows why they're late? But some of them may legitimately be late, and some of them could have been delayed by unscrupulous postal workers. And I think that's really part of what the story's about. Unfortunately, we see this happening all around the country. In California, over 100,000 ballots, mail-in ballots were rejected just recently and a few weeks ago during their elections for various reasons. States have rejected tens of thousands of mail-in votes that are not accepted. This wouldn't happen in a polling type situation. This has only happened in vote by mail. And uh, if you vote by mail in Florida, you are 10 times more likely to have your ballot rejected than if you try to go and vote at a polling station. There's something wrong here. Now, how else can a U.S. Postal Service employee illegally impact an election? Well, they can selectively destroy or uh, delay mailers, as the story that I just explained to you from SeaTac illustrates locally. That story I'm very familiar with. But it's not an isolated incident. In fact, just in Texas a couple weeks ago, a Postal Service worker was caught throwing away a Republican uh, legislator's, uh, Republican candidates, uh, all their brochures and their flyers. They were throwing them in the dumpster, and they got caught doing that. That is a, somebody committing a crime and being dishonest and trying to influence an election by destroying election communication. Now, how else can they affect and illegally affect an election? Well, they can selectively lose or misplace certain ballots. They can decide, you know, every year I hear about hundreds of people in Washington state who don't get their ballots, their ballots never show up. Now, there's a way you can resolve that. You can contact the auditor's office or the secretary of state, and you can get a ballot, a replacement ballot sent to you. But what happened to that ballot in the first place? In Cowlitz County, there was an example that was given to me where the whole street, nobody on that street got their ballots. Well, what happened to them? They all had to go get new ones. And it's hard enough to get people to participate in the voting process anyway. Even uh, if everything is handed to you, we know that voter participation, there's 40 or 50% sometimes the people that don't vote at all. Imagine how much easier it is to ensure there's less voter participation if they never get their ballot in the first place. And if you're an unscrupulous uh, postal worker, you could easily decide that all those people are a bunch of Democrats or all those people are a bunch of Republicans or whatever your bias, your political bias might be, that could influence whether or not you deliver their ballot. And it'd be very difficult to prove and to sort that out from the general incompetence that could be occurring at the post office anyway. You could... Also, one of the other problems, as illustrated in Whatcom County, you could decide that you're going to give special treatment to one political party versus another, or in this case, one candidate versus another. You could attach their campaign literature to the ballot. It's illegal. You're not supposed to do that. But apparently it's done. And we just see from a few days ago that this candidate was openly bragging about the fact that this postal worker union had endorsed her and that they were helping her with her campaign in this manner. 
And, you know, we shouldn't have to be out here treading tip nine toes, being worried that we're going to offend our postal worker or they're going to figure out what party affiliation we are. And then that has the potential to influence whether or not we get our ballots, whether our ballots actually get mailed, and whether or not we're going to get flyers from certain people or not. This is very troubling. Now, it's, there is plenty of bad behavior that's been documented at the U.S. Postal Service with some of their employees. But obviously, probably most people that work there, just like in any other agency, are just doing their job. They're trying to do the best they can, and probably most of them do the right thing. But it doesn't take very many bad actors to have significant impact in a vote-by-mail system. The inspector general, who is assigned to the uh, Postal Service, the National Postal Service, they're they do a lot of investigations. You can go to their website and you can see they have statistics there. 1,400 investigations, 440 arrests, and over 1,057 administrative actions over the last two years alone. That's 2018 and 2019. So I don't know how many they're doing right now. They don't post that information up yet. But there's obviously a number of people they catch doing bad things. And that's just going to be human nature and it's going to be the nature of bureaucracy. You get any big group of people together, you're inevitably going to have people that are bad apples. And that's why you get stories of postal workers being arrested for bribery schemes. That's why you get stories of uh, hundreds of mail-in ballots being uh, on vote fraud cases out of New Jersey and people being convicted of this vote fraud scheme in New Jersey for a mail-in uh, mail vote-by-mail scheme uh, just recently. These things can happen. Now, the problem is, if you're under a vote-by-mail system like Washington State is, where it's 100% vote-by-mail, it, that system is completely broken and it fails if you cannot trust the U.S. Postal Service. You have lost the chain of custody with your ballots. You have no way of knowing if, you're, if your vote's going to be counted, if you even are going to get your ballot, if you're being manipulated by how the information that's being provided to you or the information you're trying to send out, whether it even gets to that source. This is a problem, and this is a fundamental weakness of the vote-by-mail system because you've added a new layer, the U.S. Postal Service, which we most of us would automatically come to trust. And now that we're discovering that some of them have decided to become engaged in the political process at their work, we know that there's a problem. So if you're a state that hasn't done what Washington's done and gone all vote-by-mail, don't go there. It's a mistake. Unless you want to have stories like this where you live on a regular basis, don't go there. And it brings a whole new meaning to the idea of going postal. Yeah, we have lots of problems and there's enough challenges with voting and voting integrity and retaining voting integrity to introduce that new problem. Now, that doesn't do any good uh, if you live in Washington and you live in a place that is a full all vote by mail. Even with COVID-19, that feels comfortable for people because they don't have to go to a polling station. That's always been one of the concerns and pushes right now for vote by mail. But what do you do if you're in a place like Washington and you have to do it? Well, there's a couple things you can do to at least improve the likelihood that your vote will be counted. One of them is you hand deliver your, your ballot to the auditor's office. You are able to do that. It's a little bit more work. It's not as convenient sticking it in your mailbox, but if you hand deliver it, you can be fairly certain that it gets to the right place. In most counties of Washington State, they also have these special lock boxes that are set up for uh, ballots, and you can put it in there. Uh, at least there's a little bit more of a chain of custody in that box of ballots getting to the auditor's office. It's not a perfect system, but it appears to be safer and better than going through the post office. Another suggestion that I usually give to people who are voting and they ask questions like this is to mail in your vote, or mail in your ballot as soon as possible. As soon as you figure out who you're going to vote for, fill it out, get it mailed early. That eliminates the likelihood that somebody would potentially decide to just hold on to it for a while and mark it late so it doesn't get postmarked in time. And it gets it in the system a lot earlier. And I think that you're more likely to be counted in that first round of counting, which is very important. It also gives you the ability, if you want to, to check to make sure your ballot's actually in the system. If you mail it in early, you can actually check. And if you go to the Secretary of State's website right here, they actually have what's called a matchback uh, system. Political insiders kind of use this and campaigns use this to see how many people are voting. You can use this as well to see if they got your ballot. And it's not a bad way of being able to verify that they got your ballot. Not a guarantee that they filled it out correctly, not a guarantee that somebody didn't change it, but at least it's a guarantee that they got it. And so that's uh, one benefit of mailing it in early. If you mail it in late uh, and it's marked late, you're done. And if you mail it in late, you can't actually check to see that they have it. And the final thing that I would leave you with as far as something you can do is that 
elections are not sexy. They're kind of boring. It's a type of political um, activity that most people don't want to pay attention to. They're going to go down to Olympia and they're going to testify on all kinds of other social issues or tax issues or something that's a little bit more exciting than the wonkish world of election law. But it matters. Election integrity is critical. Uh, I actually testified a couple years ago on trying to allow counties in Washington state, if they wanted to, to go back to a polling type system so that they could uh, resolve some of the concerns that they had with mail-in voting. And um, it was, I was happy they at least gave us a hearing. I just happened to notice it was, uh, it was on the agenda of the legislature, and this was a couple years ago, but uh, it didn't go anywhere. But perhaps ideas like that that give us a little bit more flexibility would go somewhere if we start exposing the truth about some of these problems and being more involved and engaged in the process, encouraging more transparency and auditability for those ballots. We really want to make sure that there's some uh, integrity and confidence in our voting system. And once we start to see stories like what just happened this weekend in Whatcom County pop up, I'm really concerned that it really destroys the integrity of the system and it raises a ton of questions that really need to be investigated on how honest and effective the system is. It's very important. And so we wanna basically, if I can leave you with anything, do not be discouraged, get involved and engaged. Make sure you go out and vote. Voting is a critical part of being an American citizen and making a difference where you live, especially in your local elections. Your votes count even more there because you impact it on a greater percentage. And uh, throwing your hands up in the air and saying the whole system's corrupt or I can't fix anything or it doesn't matter anyway or nobody cares is a big mistake. I do think that people who are corrupt want you to think like that and they want you to act that way. Get over your apathy and get over that laziness and fill out your ballot, do the right thing and reform the problems that you see. Find ways of getting to those fixes and be willing to share your story and the truth. If you've seen something like this, or other stories that are similar of corruption and dishonesty or questionable behavior around elections, please make sure that you send a comment in below or that you send me any questions that you might have. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you want to learn more, go to wethegovern.com and read in the description below for more information. As always, I appreciate your comments. I will try to get back to you as much as I can. Remember to share with others, subscribe, and remember the future belongs to those who show up.